Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel Curiosity Rocks and I'm back again with the free real autism checklist. <laughs> so the se next section in the female autism checklist which is written by Samantha Craft and I'll put the link and information in the description box. This section we're going to talk about is called section B innocent and we have 10 um, statements to discuss so the first statement is naive now i have had to look that up in the dictionary because i sort of know what it is but sort of don't because it's a very vague word to me it, when you when you say the word it doesn't imply a, a, a definition uh, in my head anyway so I had to look it up and I found some synony synonyms uh, first of all my auntie has said I'm naive and I have been very naive with blokes and I am a fair f I, have a, I have a bit of a fairy tale person as a well the synonyms let's look at the synonyms Naive means uh, showing a lack of experience, wisdom or judgment. So I wouldn't say I lack wisdom or judgment, but then I would say that because I would be naive thinking that I wouldn't be, I would la wouldn't lack it, but that would be naive of me to think that I don't lack it. But the synonyms are innocent. I wouldn't. I don't um, know, but innocent seems like a fairy or a just wide-eyed cherub. I, I know. I I swear a lot. I have meltdowns a lot. I think rude stuff a lot. So. I think innocent is a very odd word for, in my opinion. But the other words, synonyms are unsophisticated. I don't know because are the sophisticated people all the poncy ones? Like all the poncy ones in Poland. Uh, if compared to them, yes, I am unsophisticated. I, lays about in pajamas and don't wear dress and don't wear posh dresses and put loads of makeup on and go on housewives of cheshire <laughs> uh, they're unsophisticated compared to them but they are really horrible to each other so i don't know artless no except but in, if we're talking about royal family and then yes ingenuous no, inexperienced, I, no. childlike, trusting, trustful, dewy eyed, starry eyed. If you, if there's an, a, a, I tend to latch on to nice gentlemen on Twitter. <laughs> no, if there's a nice gentleman that I make friends with, I get, I can get very Disney princess. I've been busy building the Disney castle in Lego and I've been having my Disney music on and when I um, latch on to somebody, a nice gentleman who's nice to me, uh, I tend to get my Disney music on and start floating off into a, a sort of fantasy and it is like, is that I latch on to nice gentlemen who are nice to me. Um, I guess um, I don't latch on to women as much because I was bullied a lot and most of it was by other females. So I find it a lot easier to latch on to men which can get, has like got me into some sort of bit of starry eyed <sighs> clinging onto a boy who was being a naughty boy and but I loved him and then he left me and I was devastated 
and then I've had um well the my first boyfriend it lasted quite a while and I do realise now that there were there were things that I could have said no to and that I could have told him he was a big dickhead for and then there's been other boys that have been dickheads but I was a bit <gasps> he likes me he likes me about and I shouldn't have been because they were dickheads so I have been known to not know a dickhead at the time that I meet said dickhead but I do re regarding the synonyms yeah I can be very starry eyed I have been I'm very obsessed with Vicborn which is Queen Victoria shipped with Lord Melbourne and because uh, I've been watching the Victoria program with Jenna Coleman in and I fell totally for that and now I've been started collecting loads of books about Lord Melbourne or the ones I could find anyway there's not that many so so it doesn't take me long but like so I've collected all those books and if you hear any clinking I'm just messing about with some Lego that's in one of these drawers yeah uh, so I guess I would be naive but I am um quite because I've been like bullied a lot I am quite skeptical at times and I do tend to be like the um meme with a fry from future of armor and he and he's all like that so I have built up sort of distrust but when I do find that a, a nice gentleman has um, favourited something or has actually supported me on Twitter I totally latch on and start thinking I've got a big girl crush and we're going to get together and get married so I can be like that so the next statement is honest yeah I'm that I'm very good at um saying yeah you look a right dickhead in that dress or whatever um uh yeah I tend to well I get really annoyed what really annoys me um is when is when certain family members they start telling their story about oh we did this and then we did that and I'm like and whenever there's an inaccuracy I say no you didn't it wasn't like that it wasn't this it wasn't that and I'm correcting I tend to correct people a lot so they like uh, not making stuff up and I'll be like oh she's making it all up what are the politics so yeah I'm honest and um, so I'm good at advising you what clothes look good because if someone generally looks good I, I'm like oh wow what if but then when people come up to say oh um, does this look good and, like, and if, if it's like I don't know but this isn't what honest is oh, no. This is what this means. Uh, I don't know. I guess. Yes, I would say sorry. Experiences. Next statement. Experiences trouble with lying. Yes, because on soaps, I have I have a very hard time with soaps. Um, my favourite soaps are Coronation Street and Emmerdale and it's like when somebody's lying on the soap and I'm like ah and I get really really angry and then cause amongst the family when people are talking about someone else's back I get really and get like really angry and then people they they all point they all sort of one of the mottos of the family is don't tell Alan anything that might be a secret because you can't tell Alan anything and that's yeah when it was my mum and dad's anniversary 
jo my brother had organised a party thing and he only told me just as he was walking through the vet door into the venue. He so, said, by the way, this is a surprise for mum and dad. And he, and he, he, he didn't tell me because it would have come out. I would have blurted out. I tend to blurt things out. So I'm not very good at keeping secrets. But I can be good if it's a very important, valuable friend. But I tend to blurt things out if it's family matters. Um, find, next statement. Finds it difficult to understand manipulation and disloyalty. Well, yeah, because I don't understand how to answer the question. Oh, like this section um, is easier than the, the first section, but it's pretty difficult because it's hard to grasp any solid examples with Then the next statement, finds it difficult to understand vindictive behaviour and retaliation. I don't know, I don't sort of understand that people are dickheads. So I see that. Oh no! I was meant to like swear, like, like not swear. But I forgot about YouTube censorship, you can't swear. So I forgot all about that. I hope I hope I'm allowed to monetize this. I don't know what my camera just did. I hope it wasn't on the screen itself. I just turned this bit off. So let me just check my volumes down. Yes. Sorry, sorry. I am concentrate. I'm not very concentrated today. But I needed to get my videos done because I've been doing my art lots and I did a really good portrait challenge yesterday and I was really proud of it. So I thought, well, I've I've got that done so I can do videos. Anyway, find it difficult to understand victim vindictive behaviour and retaliation. Yeah, I get really frustrated with my extended family because everything's all about What's that person doing? What's that person doing? What are we talking about now? Do that. And I don't know. I guess. It's hard to analyze it. I don't. Easily fooled and conned. Now, I wouldn't say so, but that. Because I'm quite sceptical and suspicious person at times. Easily done. So not really, so don't try and con me because I will be very suspicious of you. But I don't know. Feelings of confusion and being overwhelmed. Yes, obviously. I'm obviously confused with these questions because they're really hard. Because, like, difficult to understand addictive behaviour. Yeah, but you'd have to give me some solid examples. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just really angry because my words don't work and I don't know how to answer these questions. Easily for. Look. It's hard to answer them now because I remember because it's from experience of having a difficult time when I was a kid, having a difficult time adjusting to go to college and, and, and adjusting to all these different people and being bullied. So I guess it given me a harder face of skepticalness and suspicion but I still can end up being 
falling in love and being floaty, starry-eyed. But it's really hard to analyse and put it into words. So I find it the raw statements for and find really difficult under the innocent category. Feelings of confusion and being overwhelmed. It depends on the situation though. Without a context, these questions are difficult to answer. If you put me into a specific context of a place and then ask me, I would be able to tell you if I was feeling confused and overwhelmed. But just answering a list of questions about an unsolid example is really difficult. Feelings of being misplaced and or from another planet. Yeah, I used to have that a lot when I was a kid because when I used to get upset when there was misunderstandings and it, and I would um, hug my radiator in my childhood bedroom and, uh, and say I want to go home, I want to go home because I thought the aliens or something they'd come and take me home so yeah I'd have that a lot when I was a kid and I found it a bit scary because it's like how can I want to go home, I am at home but I still wanted to go home but I didn't know what at home was and then I got obsessed with aliens when I was in high school and thought they would take me away and abduct me because I got, because we started watching the X-Files and Dad is obsessed with the X-Files and, and we used to watch that and then I used, I, I got like really sucked into conspiracy theories I've been really scared of aliens coming to get me so I didn't get a lot of sleep at night time. Being misplaced, where well, I've had derealization, not de depersonalization, where I felt that part of me left my body and then I was like on my own for a week. So, and I was just clinging to top gear. <laughs> but, oh, so I had that and that was scary. Feelings of isolation. I can get lonely sometimes, but a lot of this, and I kind of get a bit sad that I've not got this magical marriage or magical man, but then I think, oh, I'd probably get pissed off a lot with him, and I quite like my own space and my own time to build Lego and do pictures and art. So. I guess sometimes I feel lonely, but then other times I get to do my own thing. And statement number 10 is abused or taken advantage of as a child, but didn't think to tell anyone. Then, um, yeah, because I, I had a hard time growing up because I was frequently misunderstood but I didn't know how to cope with being misunderstood because I didn't know why I was being misunderstood and why people didn't just get, get me and then I was bullied a lot and I just felt shit about myself and just didn't understand what I was doing wrong and why people were angry with me and why it's so important to that put that put a persona on and like be desperate for people to like it. And I think from being a from a kid I was pretty From when I was a kid, I was pretty like pushy, wanting to push other people away and being pissed off with people. So I wasn't like 
oh I really want to join in with those people I want to be their best buddies I was like I hate them dickheads I don't want to and be I don't want to have anything to do with them so I tend I've never apart from the the, the boys that I really liked and because I've had a many many crushes where I've been really obsessed with boys and teachers and older men <laughs> I've had that a lot but I've been obsessed with boys I'm like basically I'm basically Tina Belcher from Bob's Burgers obsessed with boys and liking horses and drawing pictures well she does erotic friend fiction I draw pictures of me with and people that I like and draw pictures of the people I like and then I be obsessed with them and try to see if that's what happens so one thing I didn't think to tap what I, what I wish when I was younger is I wish I'd said I don't ha want to go to this school I hate this school can I uh, do something else but I felt I couldn't say anything because my brother had gone to the same school and it was all fine and it was a really good school apparently but so I never thought I could say anything and actually escape from it and do learning that suited me so I wished I'd spoke up before and got out of the school because I hated it and I found it really difficult to learn because half the time I was rocking on my chair and doodling so I found it hard to concentrate and since and that well in my 20s I was ill a lot and not mentally well at all and so when I got to about 28 that I started to think about teaching myself stuff and think about getting back into doing art and it was I think what prompted me um, actually pursuing what I could actually do and what I is what I'm good at is um, when Doctor Who we um, came back on the tally in 2005 I became a real big Doctor Who fan and I joined in on the Doctor Who forum and then I um, tried, uh, decided to restart doing art and then then when my first relationship broke up after about nearly 10 years together I decided I kicked, that kicked off me wanting to do YouTube so it was pretty much Doctor Who that got me into believing in myself again and, and, and knowing what I wanted to do but yeah there's a lot of examples where I wished I'd spoke up um, but obviously I, I couldn't because I was I felt uh, I have selective mutism so it was hard to speak up and I thought I couldn't speak up and say I hate this school, I hate this bus journey, I hate the whole lot Um, I don't want to be there so I wish I hadn't gone if, I, if um, knowledge about autism had been about it uh, when I was uh, going to high school I wish I could have gone to it like a uh, school for autistic people or maybe or if the or I wish the family had understood autism and it was we and it was totally understood by everyone then I would have had a better childhood and I would have understood things a lot more when I was a teenager especially when I was 14 I was a really angry teenager and very destructive and just very angry when I was 14 and because it was really difficult because I didn't feel that people understood me and I didn't know what to do about it and I didn't know why and I didn't and it was 
I don't know, is that if I got spoken up, then maybe they'd like me and we would have got along better because, but because I didn't speak up, they teased me and bullied me, which made me hide even more, I want to get away even more. It's like kids, that, and when I was at sex form, um, that, um, when it was only when I was leaving those educational places that people realised that their what they were saying to me and what they were bullying me that that was what had upset me and then they're like, oh, oh no, why did you say anything? Because you're bullying me, and it's like you should have spoke to us. Well, if you hadn't been bullying me, I might have done, but you were bullying me. So I'm either going to want us to be up and be open and be my true self with people bullying me. So they were, had very weird logic. It didn't make any sense. And it was like horrible. And so the way I got through was I was a, I punched people. So basically I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't a, oh, I need to go and tell someone, person, I just punched somebody <laughs> and I just go on with the rest of the day. And so, and it only came to, but there's a story that my mum insists is true, that I apparently punched someone and knocked him unconscious. Well, I don't remember that at all. So I don't know if she's exaggerating. But well, that was my way of coping was um, physical attack, basically, which, no, it, I wouldn't recommend because it's not, but it, it did work. Cause, and then I, was, I had a respite for a few hours. Um, but I hated school. I wish I'd said I didn't want to go. Another thing I wish I'd mentioned was I had these black school shoes and I remember when I was in the playground, they burnt my feet really bad and it was really painful. But I never thought to say anything. So yes. So as I'm talking, I think that yeah, I am naive because in the in the present moment I find it difficult to get my processes correct and know what I want need to do and what I need to say. And it's only when I look back on things that I understand what I was feeling and what I could have done to change things. So that's the trouble. So, and yeah, I would say regarding the Star of Yard stuff, I, would, I am naive because I get that. And I am childlike because like, it wants to be a born grown up anyway. And so I'm like, oh, I want to marry a man. I don't, I don't have, like, this romantic thing, but I'd be, uh, well, it wouldn't work because I'd be totally a, a complete kid and just completely useless at any of the adult important stuff like accounting and banking. Because it's, so, yeah, I'm rubbish at a uh, grade up, essential grade up things. I'm not very good at it. I'm better at wanting to build a goat. So I'm better at and reading books a lot and just being obsessed with books, Doctor Who, Lego and that and cuddly toys and um yay and watching YouTube. Let's go back to <coughs> statement oh. Statement four and five. Um, manipulation and disloyalty. Basically, yes. Find it difficult to understand addictive behaviour and retaliation. But well, I understand the mechanics of it, but I don't understand. I don't really understand the people. The people in their head are very, like, sort of 
flat view of things of like don't be an idiot or don't kill people, don't be a twat and not really be able to get into the mechan into the understanding of their processes inside their head. And when people are mean about Jeremy Corbyn, I get, don't be mean about him. So yeah, I do get protective of the things I'm interested in. And when um, people are mean about Rose Tyler on Doctor Who, I get very protective. I, I'm very sort of like, horrid people, good people, mean people. And I find it hard to have any more like, complex issues because the mechanics to me are people being evil and I wish they weren't and I wish it, we could just have peace so and political stuff um, I tell you about the political stuff the past the previous um, government I was obsessed with Nick Clegg so I guess that's naive I was mainly enjoyed watching Nick Clegg on tally and seeing what colour tie he has so that's kind of I think you find out how naive I am when you spend time with me really um, rather than me answering the questions so yeah and then I joined the Liberal Democrats but that was just because um, I was going to miss seeing Nick Clegg on the tally because I'd fancied him for ages and I thought I'll join the same club as Nick Clegg's in and I got the membership card of Nick on. So that's why I joined the Liberal Democrats. And um, my membership's run out, so I don't know if I want to rejoin anyway, because of my feelings about Nick not being on the tally so much. Have, um, I, they've calmed down now. I can cope with it. So I don't know if I'll renew my membership, because that was the only reason I joined. So, yeah. And uh, I just get really excited about stuff, and then, right, and then I get upset because I think, I, Tim Downey, um, he's an actor. Is that my chair making a noise? He's an actor, and he he said something. He said a really nice thing about one of my autism education videos and then I got really excited and I started thinking about Oh, we get to get together and have a relationship So, yeah, so if So, I probably reveal my secret now that I might be having a fantasy about you if I had that chance to you on Twitter If you're a nice gentleman, that is but I do appreciate all the connections I've made on Twitter and it's awesome. Um so yeah. Um yeah, I guess I'm pretty honest. Felix of confusion. That's really hard one because it it's context dependent. But it's also, I am confused about answering the confusion question. Sometimes, sometimes I get overwhelmed if I have, I don't know, I can get like overwhelmed and not really able to explain why and not really able to understand. And then sometimes I can get pulled along if people pulled along with things and then not realise it and then get upset. Um, yeah, so I can be very latch on to people. And like, uh, be obsessed with Rufus Sewell. I do have to say his name. But I'm obsessed with Lord Melbourne now, the real one, and Rufus's version. And it's like, why couldn't we have had a whole series of Lord Melbourne and then the Albert? I love Mammoth Screen Productions. I just 
sometimes wish because they tend to like do quite uh, go at quite a pace with the storytelling so you get through the story pretty quick i wish sometimes that we could have just a longer perspective view of things especially with Vicborn, which we only got about five episodes is that the shortest the shortest shit ever it's like oh we only got five episodes but i hope to find lots of mashups on youtube of people doing stories about them that would be awesome so that is my video about section b of the female autism checklist i hope and um, i know none of these are coherent are going to be coherent videos because i don't i'm not very good at that and i don't really want to do be a person who writes down exactly what they want to say because i don't feel genuine then i don't feel that it i feel that's too stilted so that is hello i'm back in the room so that is my answers so i hope you have enjoyed this video i hope you've been able to understand any of it so thank you for watching yay